Hi there, welcome back to the Grape Explorer. Today it's the world of wine. We're going to go through some of the stories I've picked out over the last month. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is the Grape Explorer. Here we do wine education, product reviews, and lots of wine tastings. So let's get straight into the first story, and it's a subject that I'm always fascinated about, and that's wine fraud. Coming from winesearcher.com, uh, the story is all about the new world of wine fraud, and as more and more of our world of wine moves online, so does more and more wine fraud. Um, Whilst many companies are relishing the move online, um, particularly for sales in, in results of the, what's been going on around the globe in the last year, it has meant there's, there's been an increase in online frauds as well. And when it comes to wine, there are really sort of two types of frauds in particular that are most prevalent. That is that you are buying a product that isn't what it's advertised as, such as fake wine, you know, whatever's in the bottle isn't what the label is telling you. And the other one, of course, is where you buy a collection of wines, perhaps, or you buy bottles of wine online, and they just simply don't show up because it's a fake website. These are both really increased in the last 12 months or so. And whilst almost all online sales of wine are of course legitimate, scammers use the anonymous nature of the internet to cheat unsuspecting wine buyers. But it is interesting that in the last 12 months where the shift has gone to online, it's unsurprising that the fraudsters have followed anybody and are looking to exploit opportunities. Now moving on to kind of a fraud of a different nature. This next story is from Decanter and it's all about wine and the price of wine. And a study discovered that higher wine prices can enhance the taste of wine, even if the enhanced price isn't necessarily true. The study found that people enjoyed a wine more when they were told it was worth four times more than its actual face value. 135 people were used as part of a study. They were given three Italian wines, all from the 2013 vintage. They were told that one bottle was priced at £30, one at 25 and one at 50. But the £30 bottle was in reality only priced at £8. And because of this perception of the higher price, they gave the wine really favourable reviews in comparison to the other wines as well. They thought it was a better wine than the £25 wine, for example, simply based on price. The individuals who were subjects of this study were regular wine drinkers, but wouldn't consider themselves professional tasters in any capacity. And I think it's a really interesting manipulation, isn't it? That you're being told something is of high value, and so your brain is almost telling you, well, it must be good because it costs a lot. A, a really interesting study. The, they held wine tastings in, in small groups um, during an open evening at the University of Basel in Switzerland. The cheapest wine was rated as more pleasant when presented as fourfold its actual price. Interestingly, when the £50 bottle was told to be four times less, no one said that they enjoyed it any less. So really fascinating that people are equating higher price with better quality. And as it, as it says here, you know, the mind is a beautiful thing. It's able to bend the truth to the point where the expectations fit the reality. Really interesting study. And perhaps a warning to people who come to my house. If ever I serve you what I tell you is a seven pound bottle of wine, it might only be worth four pounds. Now, moving on to a story that I captured from winebusiness.com, and this is all about business. This is the very much the business side of the wine industry. It's not about the winemaking at all. And it's a story that Delicato Vineyards are suing a Chilean wine producer for alleged trademark infringement when it comes to some of the design and packaging of a particular product. Like I say, very much on the business side of things here. Delicato are suing a Chilean producer called Vina Concha y Toro for a product that they've produced. It's a, a boxed wine called Frontera, where Delicato are claiming it has copied the image that they have on their Nighthawk range of wines. Now, what was particularly interesting to me for this was not only that they are alleging that the design had been copied, but the product that this design is used on is identical as well. So it's I guess from Delicato's point of view, they believe that Vina Concha y Toro aren't, are simply trying to dupe people into believing that it's something perhaps that it's not. I've put the two designs up on this page for you now. So this is the Nighthawk design. This is the Delicato one. So this is the original design. And then this next gra screen grab here is the Frontera design. And as you can see, very similar in nature. You know, they both have a bird in them. They both have sort of mountainous background. 
But again, what I found interesting was that these are on the same product. It's a three litre boxed wine that both of these designs pertain to. And of course, Delicato are saying, well, you're infringing on our trademark rights here. And that's a really important part of business, isn't it? Um, the, the intellectual property here, we're not talking about the wine at all. It's the IP of the producer and of their designs, their illustrations. And obviously they don't want someone going into a store buying a, bo a box of Frontera, believing it to be Nighthawk. So the, the court case, which has been lodged at federal courts, is all pertaining to that. And I just found that a really interesting side of the business side of wine. You know, these are big corporations that we're dealing with when it comes to certain owners, and they are protective of their IP. And of course, they have every right to do that. So it'd be interesting to see how this one comes out. Next, I'm gonna move back to decanter and a story about the weather. Um, they're saying that Europe is currently seeing the worst summer droughts for over 2000 years. Climate change has led to unprecedented era of summer droughts in recent years. This could have and probably will have implications for the wine industry. Uh, the data itself focused on Central Europe, but it is consistent with patterns that we're seeing globally. And of course, we are seeing a shift in sometimes the types of grapes that are being grown in certain regions. Sometimes it's new countries onto the market who previously may not have been successful with wine are starting to because they're seeing better weather. You know, in the vineyards, a degree of water stress during the growing season is seen as beneficial um, in varying degrees, but severe droughts can really impact the yields and influence how the grapes ripen. Some grape varieties grown in drier, warmer conditions are naturally better at conserving water, found a recent study. But those that can't, that are perhaps getting more and more subject to these summer droughts are obviously going to be impact some of the choices the wine producers are going to make. We may see some grape styles fall away and others become more popular in wine regions that perhaps we're not used to. And I think that's a really interesting point that climate change is having a substantial impact on the wine industry and what is produced. And then finally, I've picked up on a story which is for rich people. Um, a luxury wine wall with a robotic arm has launched. The fine wine showcase with a robotic arm picks out your desired bottle. And then with a virtual sommelier, it suggests food pairings that you might wish to enjoy with that bottle. Um, wine Cab has said that its luxury wine wall includes a seven axis industrial high speed robotic arm. Don't know what any of that means. The technology is capable of fetching a wine from the collection and delivering the bottle to drinkers via a glass panelled hatch. It's a bit like trying to win one of those teddy bears in the in the, one of those machines. That's that's how I imagine that. I'm also amazed that people can't simply walk into their own cellar if they're that rich and just hand, hand pick a bottle. What's the problem? The cost of these is $180,000 starting price. Um, they have a number of different um, styles in production. Um, they're temperature controlled. They're very much aimed at the higher end of the market and serious wine enthusiasts, or as I like to call it, people with more money than cents. Um, if you are a serious wine enthusiast and you're willing to spend almost £200,000 on such a gadget, I think you should know what you should be able to pair it with already. You don't need a digital assistant to do that for you. I'm just amazed that this is the sort of thing people are interested in buying. There, incredibly, there is a waiting list for new orders and Wine Cab was working to a delivery time of four months. So that just shows the bespoke nature of this particular product. Buyers can customize the design of the wine wall, but each has this virtual sommelier system installed that can offer food and wine pairing advice. So are we about to uh, retire human sommeliers? Is this the future for restaurants? I certainly hope not. Um, I think that takes away some of the experience really and you know, digitally programming a sommelier, I don't want our robot overlords to be overtaking us and then forcing wines upon us that we don't want to drink. I might have taken that a bit too far there. Anyway, those are some of the stories that caught my eye in the last month, but down in the comments section, let me know what's caught your eye as well. I'll see you soon on the Grape Explorer. Cheers.